It took a while to count all the survivors. Mercifully, the village of Lindworm remained unharmed. Those mages still left there, and even the non-mages came to help with the wounded and clean up. None who had fought in the battle had gone unscathed in one way or another. Those with less serious wounds did their best to ease the suffering of those around them. Meanwhile, those without medical skills went to bury the dead. The remains of the revenants were thrown over the side of the endless chasm. Tyler and Anwen led those of the dragons who were left. They healed where necessary, showing support and offering comfort as well. Both seemed distracted in their efforts, though. They each had suffered some kind of loss in the recent events, and it was taking its toll. Walter and Leslie volunteered to help clear the land. There was a lot of work to be done, including removing the debris from the battle. Those mages who were not otherwise engaged helped in the effort. And when Leslie found the body of Sarah, they paused for her to bury her in honor in the lattice-covered tombs of Tarragon. The cleanup effort took several weeks. Word surfaced of seismologists reporting quakes in the lowlands. None seemed inclined to come up into the mountains to check on the source, though. They took it as one last gift from the Nurim. Either way, it meant the villagers were left to mourn and clean up without interference. With high summer upon them, the effort came hard. A week passed after the onslaught. One day, Walter became frustrated. There was some stubborn lumber scattered around that didn't want to move. In an unusual bout of temper, he glared too long at one offending stump and found it had somehow caught fire. Startled by this unexpected event, he couldn't help but recall the events inside the mountain. A feeling of intense heat had filled him when the messengers had given him some kind of gift. Sure to take precautions, Walter forced himself to glower at another stump. After several seconds, a thin stream of smoke came from the exact spot he'd focused on. A moment later, it burst into flame. Even though he'd sort of expected it, the veteran couldn't help but jump. Dang! He cussed, eyes alight. Leslie came around to see why Walter wasn't busy chopping at the wood and stared with widened eyes. <laughs> well, isn't that something? She commented as she realized what had happened. <laughs> Just when did you acquire the ability to call it fire? She gave him a calculating look. She felt sure he hadn't displayed any magical abilities up until they'd helped take down the Revenant's leader. Walter told her of his encounter with the messengers while inside the mountain, and how they'd given him a gift. He hadn't thought about it until now. You think they did this to me? He gave her a questioning look in exchange for a calculating one. Not sure what to think of the tale, Leslie only nodded. It wouldn't surprise me. She agreed. Now that I think of it, it actually makes sense. Only those with some kind of mage ability could have helped with the final showdown. A sly smile creased her face as she contemplated the possibilities this presented. You know, we could use this to our advantage. <laughs> I can't help but wonder what kind of children we'd have. Eyes wide in shock, Walter could only stare at her. Did you just say what I think you said? He couldn't help but gape, though the fires rearing up caused him to divert his attention. Between the two of them, they controlled the blaze, reducing the tree remains to ash. Once the fire had died down, Leslie reached out a hand in an almost shy manner towards Walter. I, I meant what I said. <laughs> she emphasized. If you're willing, I'd like to spend the rest of forever with you. Walter slid his fingers between hers. He'd be a fool to hide the fact that she'd grown on him. There was a faint twinge of grief as he recalled his departed family, but he gave her a wry look. Isn't the guy supposed to ask? Leslie snorted. Oh, who cares about outdated conventionalities? She retorted. <laughs> when I know what I want, I go for it. So, are you going to answer or not? Walter didn't wait for further invitation to take her into his arms and press his lips against hers. They were both a little breathless and weak-kneed when they parted. In case you need clarification, that would be a yes. He whispered in her ear. Her eyes went wide for a brief moment before she melted into another <laughs> kiss. Her arms wrapped around his strong shoulders and his around hers. Several more weeks passed as the cleanup efforts continued. Most of the mages and dragons had recovered, and those who hadn't were well on their way to recovery. Of the dragon mages, only a third of their original number remained. 
And of the dragons, only half. Though not all with wings would ever regain the skies above them. The majority of the original council had died in the battle. Only the younger dragons remained. As the oldest dragon remaining from among them, Tyler became the favorite for the new leader of the council. The sustaining of his new position was unanimous. Amid cheers, Tyler Damon Durand had the honor of Nirium conferred upon him by the remaining members. These members included Anwin, Walter, Courtney, and Leslie. Leslie was included in honor of her title as the Walker. The celebration lasted all day and into the night. While there was a quiet moment, Tyler and Anwin snuck from the festivities. They sat quietly on the same rock where they'd watched the dragon boats what felt like an eternity ago. In human form, there was more than enough room for the two of them. They watched as lighted lanterns floated down the length of the river drage, Anwin only mildly uncomfortable. In the light of the full moon, Tyler pulled out a velvet-covered box, revealing a gleaming purple gem inside. It matched the color of her scales when in dragon form. His eyes misted a bit as he went down on one knee, thinking of all they'd been through. On when, Kata Porter, my fair little dragon keeper, will you be my bride? Anwen couldn't help but blush as she threw her arms around Tyler's neck, tears flowing freely. Yes. She laughed as he picked her up and twirled her in the air, always careful not to get too close to the stone's edge. She still had some trouble with heights in mortal form. The double wedding was spectacular. Various dragons and mages had rebuilt the ruined city, fortifying it as they went. Those mages with talents for growing things encouraged the plants and trees to take root and the flowers filled the air with thick perfume. They took their vows under the open archway of the gates of eternity. Courtney's father performed the ceremony amid blossoms and other greenery. Everyone who could attend did, including the rest of the lost mages. They all decided to return to the mountain for the event, this time to stay. The voices of children filled the streets of the renamed city of New Arak. It would be home to the dragon mages and key keepers for generations to come. The festivities lasted several days. During that time, the two couples went off to celebrate their own honeymoons. Neither couple chose to disclose where they'd gone, though a few had their suspicions. Nine months later, Anwen gave birth to her first child, a wiggly little girl with tufts of red hair. She glanced almost wryly at her husband, who smiled back. Needing no further prompting, they decided to name her Emmy Kata Durand. They also chose Walter and Leslie as her godparents. Walter looked a little surprised on the name day as he was called Uncle Walt by those around him. He couldn't help but remember a little imp of a girl with flowing red hair and a white dress. It was she who had shown him the map to the lost village and he would never forget it. If he laughed more about it than anyone else, no one questioned it, especially when they saw the tears pricking at his eyes. Leslie looked a little envious at the young child. That passed as she became acquainted with her goddaughter. Iwan and Tyler were more than willing to let them spend whatever time they liked with her. And with that, everything seemed to fall in place. She later gave birth to a fine son named Torrance. You know? Tyler said one afternoon as he observed their small toddler. I have a feeling she's going to lead us on a wild goose chase one day. Iwan merely shook her head. She already has. As if their initial suspicions hadn't been enough, they were now confirmed. Little Emmy looked more and more like her namesake with every passing day. It wasn't hard to picture. In only a few short years, she'd look exactly like the little girl who had put so much into motion. In fact, Amma would bet she was one and the same. Instead of mentioning her thoughts, she chose to snuggle up closer to her husband. Well, we must have done something right. She sighed with contentment. And with those words, she stared off into the horizon. Part of her wondered when she'd meet with Kern and the others once more. <laughs> <laughs>